For Krima Media's Polity, this is Sane Lamini. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Sartner to discuss his column titled The Matter of Abashali's Lindo Shemguni. Welcome, Professor. Thanks very much for having me again. So what is motivation for these killings? If it is uh, indeed the ANC and state, who do you think are behind this and what do you think they gain from all these killings? According to Abakhlali, uh, the man who has been arrested for the, later arrested for the killing of Nukutulu, uh, Mabaso, the person before Lindo who was killed, his son has also been arrested for, for another murder. Um, he was one of the key people. What they argue is that they occupy unused land, but some of these local ANC people, I think it's Ngubani, um, what they argue is that he wants, he and others want to get this land and sell it as a profit. Whereas for them, it's a matter of survival to occupy the land which is unoccupied. They're already occupying the land and they've got uh, food that they feed people. There's a few hundred people there and, you know, they had no way of surviving before this. So that the motive of Abakhali is survival and to provide food and provide a safe home for families and children. But the motive of the killers, who they believe is the local ANC, is to um, sell that land and make a profit out of it. Build on it, perhaps, and sell it then as a profit. And how do you now make a, a, the connection between violence, murder, and inequality? Well, I got this from a United States professor, Judith Butler. What she argues is that if you kill a person, you or if you hit a person even, you are saying that that life is worth less than other lives. In other words, that, li- that person deserves to die. That person's life is not grievable. People will not miss that life. So that you have to have equality. You have to have a sense that no life is worth less than any other, that we can allow it to disappear from this earth through violence. We all grieve for the death of any human being. We can't say the grieving of some counts for nothing. She says that inequality links up with violence. And to have nonviolence means that you must have equality, and you're supposed to have equality in South Africa's constitution. So the connection between the two is important because the targets of violence are mainly the poor, the weakest, those who are less able to defend themselves. And the Wealthiest, uh, they have very good security. Even if the police are not good, they've got high walls, they've got neighborhood watches, they've got armed response, all these things. So inequality is very connected with dying and with violence. And Professor, how do you understand Abashali's claim now to practice democracy from below? And what is its relevance, if any, today? The concept of democracy or from below is the original meaning of democracy. In ancient Greece, they had direct democracy. And the only meaning given to the word democracy until the time of the American Constitution was direct democracy. There was no such thing as having someone represent people. The people themselves would directly rule. And we had this again in the people's power period of the UDF, where people at a local level took control of their own lives. It was direct democracy. Abakhlali, who come from the bottom, 
uh, say that they, they want democracy from below. But the, there is another reason besides what they want. They are at the bottom. So the democracy that they want has to be from below because they're not at the top. The top of the pile are the wealthy and the oppressors, but they are at the bottom in any case. So, but they do believe that the democracy they want to create must be one which is true democracy where everyone takes place. Incidentally, in ancient Greece, it wasn't, uh, when I say uh, direct rule, slaves didn't have democracy, and I don't think women did either. And lastly, Professor, you seem now uh, to take a different position from Abashali on their reliability of the SAPS. They see them as completely unreliable for addressing these matters. Well, you know, one understands that uh, in the case of Nukatula Mabaso, uh, mm. it took ages before the police arrived. Abakhali people were collecting the cartridges after the murder of Ayanda and Gila because the police didn't pitch up. So they have no confidence, or they say they've got no confidence in the police. But the thing is, some police are operating professionally, and that is why the alleged murderers of Nogatula Mabaso were arrested. So it's very important, in my view, despite the sorrow that people feel, to uh, try to separate those who operate professionally from those who are not prepared to do their work as police and investigate and find who the murderers are. I don't think I am in disagreement with Abakhlali. I understand their sense of hopelessness. All the leaders are underground or on the run at the moment. It's terrible. However, there are some police who are working in a professional way. It's important to call for all police to operate in a professional way and remove the stain of being unreliable. There was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's polity about the murder of Abashali's Lindo Wushemguni.